Good morning. So it's between periods. Um, it's actually my lunch period right now. I wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm doing with my college prep chemistry students today. So um, we're actually in the third day of school and the first couple of days of school, I got them used to the course norms and the expectations. And now we're kind of moving into some things to expect as far as um, completing videos and engaging with video content. And so the plan for today is to allow my students to watch a video. It's just on classification of matter. And basically in that video, I'm gonna go through, you know, pure substances versus mixtures and elements and compounds and heterogeneous, homogeneous, all that. And then I'm gonna give them a more cognitively demanding task, which is going to be make a model of all of these things. Now, I'm just gonna play the video on from my YouTube um, channel and I'm just gonna play it and um, I'm not gonna give them any instruction for how to interact with the video content. And we'll see if any of the students take out their um, notes or, or try to write anything down. And then I'm gonna, which I, I guess, I mean, I hope I'm giving them enough credit, but I, my guess is they're probably not, <laughs> but we'll see. This is the first time I'm trying it. So then once they um, complete their video, I'll give them that cognitively demanding task, a modeling task, and then more than likely, they'll probably have a difficult time doing it. And so then what I will do is I'm not gonna let them struggle for too long because then, then they'll get turned off. But basically I'm gonna say, well, I gave you a video, why didn't you learn it? And so hopefully they'll come up with, well, oh, wow, maybe I should have taken notes or you know, maybe I should have paused the video, et cetera. So um, we'll see how it goes. And then once they do that, um, I have a list of norms and I also have a bottom portion which says why, which I'll talk about a little bit later on as far as some things again, to have your students interact with meaning, like in meaningful ways with the video content. So I'll cross my fingers, it's gonna take place in about two periods, but I'm excited, it's, I'm trying something. We'll see how it goes. Well, I just finished up with my CP class and yesterday I did not have an opportunity to catch you up on how the lesson went, mostly because I actually didn't finish it. Um, sometimes that happens and you just gotta be flexible and move it to the next day. I did have the opportunity to show them the video that I created. I did not tell them to take notes, but to my surprise, many of the students actually did take out their notebooks and start writing, which I was very impressed. Um, it really kind of shows the shift that we're seeing in our students in terms of taking ownership over their learning. And I think, you know, I definitely can't take credit for that because these are new students that I have, but definitely I feel like my colleagues are doing a great job incorporating more of the ownership over learning and student-centered learning environments and NGSS. And so it was really good to see these kids say, you know what, I'm going to start taking notes, which was just awesome. There was just no prompting. Um, some students looked at me during the video and actually were looking at me to see if I was going to say, hey, start taking notes. But I didn't. I just wanted to observe them. So to my surprise, I would say probably about three students. I saw three notebooks come out out of a class of about 24. Um, and so not bad. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, I was happy with it because like I said yesterday, I didn't anticipate anybody doing it. So I should have given them a little bit more credit. Um, and then, so they watched the video through and then I gave them the cognitively demanding task to make a model of an element, compound, and mixture. They did a amazing job. I honestly, I couldn't believe it. Like I could not have asked for a more gung-ho group of students. I mean, they didn't skip a beat. They got right to work trying to figure it out. And yeah, their models weren't perfect. They weren't accurate necessarily. I mean, there were some accurate pieces, but not everything, but I was, I was really impressed with the work that they did. And even though it was challenging and they said it was challenging, they never gave up. And so that also is an indicator, number one, of the classroom culture that we've already built together. But then number two, it's really a testament to, again, my colleagues that really instill, you know, the desire to keep going and, and work through it and, you know, keep trying. So I was very impressed. I thought it was really, really great. Today, what I did was I started the day with a do now, and this was the do now. I think I showed this to you yesterday. This is basically, I had the students read um, our list of classroom norms for watching videos. And um, they, they read this over, and then I went over each one by one. And you're probably watching this video because you wanna know, well, what are my norms for the flipped classroom? And believe it or not, this is the first time that I've actually incorporated any kind of like norms in writing. I used to tell my students all the time, like, you know, you gotta take notes and you can't be on your cell phone when you're doing this. But it wasn't ever something that I like sat down and I was like, I need to tell them this is how they're supposed to be watched. So in case you're interested, I'll tell you what they are. So um, 
Norm number one is that these videos are assigned as homework. Um, I emphasize that because um, in the past, students have had issues maybe doing homework during other classes. And, um, you know, we talked about our classroom norm. One of them is to be present. And, you know, if you're doing a video, for example, at your lunch table, you're not being present at lunch. If you're doing a video in another class, like history class, you're not being present in your history class. So um, these are expected to be done at home. I also say they should be done free of distraction. So put that cell phone in the other room. I also tell my students to pause frequently so they can pause the video frequently um, whenever they need to kind of get caught up if they're writing something down. I encourage them to take notes. So I say, you know, use, you know, paraphrase, you can use Cornell notes, um, you can make a concept map, you know, and it's, it's good to write down what's on the slide, but sometimes you don't need everything. All you really need is what I'm saying on the actual video. Um, use earbuds to minimize any kind of background noise. Rewind when you don't understand. Um, always answer the question, do you have any questions in Edpuzzle? So every time I create an Edpuzzle, I always at the end put um, a, a question that says, do you have any questions? And I always tell them, answer it. If it's no, let us know, that's great. If it's yes, then tell me what it is because I always respond. And then finally, I, the rule of thumb is if I make a 10 minute video, if you're watching it appropriately and following the norms, it should take approximately 20 minutes to complete. So that's something to think about. So those were the norms. The students were pretty receptive, like, cause I said, your goal of watching these videos is to be ready for class the next day. And so that's where we transitioned into why. So the next section, I actually put a why section, you can see. And so it says why. So it says, number one, you'll be ready to participate in class. Number two, I can give you individualized attention cause I'm simply not standing up and lecturing at you, right? Um, uh, the third thing I say is you can't pause or rewind your class, right? You can't pause or rewind me. We got to keep going through content if I'm going to be lecturing to you. I also say um, you have information like in your binders that you can refer back to if we're doing that cognitively demanding task by taking those notes. It really helps with that. I also say that what's nice about this is, you know, the content is presented in multiple ways. So yeah, we're doing the guided inquiry in class, but maybe if you didn't understand what was going on in class, you can go home and you can use the video to learn the content that way. And then finally, you know, I mentioned a lot of the students constantly say, wow, you know, Miss Ari, this class goes by so fast. Well, why is that? It's because this is an exciting learning environment. You're busy, you're actively engaged, you're getting up and you're doing things. And, you know, if you want to keep that, going, you have to do the work prior. And I tell my students, I'm not going to assign videos every night. I would never do that to you. I probably assign one or two a week. Um, and that's a pretty good amount, I would say. And every video I create myself. So if you're thinking about flipping your classroom, I do encourage you to make your own video content because your students have a relationship with you. And then of course, embed it in Edpuzzle so that you can get some analytics. You can actually get free storage on Edpuzzle. So if you haven't seen what Edpuzzle is, I'll put a link down below so you can see what it, what it looks like. But I would say overall, if my students follow these norms, they're gonna be ready to participate in class the next day. And I think that's really the goal of writing this up for them. You can see too, I did copy it on thicker paper cardstock so that they always have it in their binder um, just to be reminded of what's expected of them. So hopefully that helps you to understand the how and the why I flip my class. You know, the NGSS is very difficult to implement. It's very difficult for your students sometimes to understand the content between all the, you know, phenomena that you'll be exploring, you know, and relating the content to. By flipping your class, it allows you to kind of free up your time so that you can help them. And that's why I spend so much time creating this content because I wanna be able to help my students and I wanna be able to build really strong relationships with them. So I hope this video helped you and gave you some insight as to how I flip my class and why I flip my class. Either way, I hope you have an amazing weekend and thank you so much for watching.